We're talking about Q, S, and T, and we do know that they're all different numbers, but that's about it. Now the question is interested in the relative order of Q, S, and T on the number line, and I'm tempted to start with statement two because it seems like it's only providing a partial answer to the question. It's giving me the relative order of Q and T, but I have absolutely no idea where S is. So statement two really doesn't stand a chance of being sufficient on its own, and we should probably start by eliminating the answer choices that claim that it is sufficient on its own. So B and D are gone, and we're down to answer choices A, C, and E. Let's evaluate statement one right after the intro. So statement one tells us that T minus Q is the sum of two absolute values. And I know that neither of those absolute values is zero because we were told that T, S, and Q are all different numbers. So from that, I can tell for sure, since an absolute value can never be negative, I can tell that T minus Q is positive. But that's what statement two was saying, that T minus Q is positive. Now it's possible that I can infer more stuff from statement one, so statement one still might be sufficient on its own, but I can eliminate answer choice C because answer choice C claims that although neither statement is sufficient on its own, together we get this miracle of sufficiency. And my point here is that if statement two doesn't tell us anything new that statement one didn't already tell us, right? We, we could infer statement two from statement one. If we know that statement one is true, then statement two is obviously true as well then how would this miracle happen exactly? If they're not sufficient on its own, combining them won't help. So I explain this in great detail in the second section of my book, which you can read for free on quantreasoning.com. But I think it's very powerful here to say, look, I can eliminate answer choice C just because statement one implies statement two, and I'm now down to just two answer choices. It has to be either A or E. Now, a 50-50 shot is really not bad for a hard question, which this is. So let's get down to business now. We know that t is to the right of q, again, because t minus q is the sum of two absolute values, and we know that neither of them is zero. So we know t is to the right of q. What we still need to know is whether s is in between them or not in between them. So the question is, does statement one force s to be in between them, or does statement one prevent s from being in between them. Either of those would be good. It's only if statement one allows for both possibilities, then it would be insufficient. So I'll start with the possibility of S being in between them. What statement one is telling us is that the distance between Q and T is equal to the sum of the distances between Q and S and S and T. Does that work if S is in between them? Yeah, it absolutely does. You can kind of see that visually if you draw it on your number line. Okay, what about the other option? Is it possible that S is not in between them? Like what would happen if S is to the right of T? Well, then the distance between S and T plus the distance between S and Q would be way more than the distance between Q and T. So that doesn't work. And the same issue would happen if we try to place S to the left of Q. So it turns out that statement one does force S to be in between Q and T, and therefore it is sufficient on its own, and the correct answer is A. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.